Oh, hi there. I was checking on some things on our bylaws. Thank you so much for doing, I really appreciate you doing this. Let's see, we've got, we've got three attendees and three board members. And Patricia's gonna be getting on soon as well. Good. Mac, are you here? Just logged in, okay. Yes, I'm here, can you hear me? Oh, shit, I didn't bring my uh, dog dog. <sighs> Carol, you can't swear. Can you see me? We did for a minute. Now can you see me? Yeah, now can you, hear, you can hear me? Yes. It's the first time I've done it on my phone. I'm not quite home yet. <laughs> Sorry. Patty, you're on mute. Did you get my text message? Who are you talking to? You. About it's the same always? The uh, the fact that this looks like it might go over a little bit to warn your people that oh. your meeting might start a little late. Oh, um, no, but I can do that. Okay. I, I literally just, got, just left work. So let, let me do that while we're. Okay. Just wanted to let you know. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Tony. Hello. Is there anything cute and fluffy for me to see? Let me get my fix. He's hiding from the Zumba. He's afraid of the Zumba. <laughs> oh, I, have a, I had a cat that used to like to ride them. Puppy, LG. Hi. Here he is. Hi there, Pop. LG, how you doing? How you doing, guy? Huh? Hi. Yeah, he'd say, all right, I did this. Now, do I still have to look at the camera? <laughs> He's such a cutie. Yes. All right, we've got four minutes, and after that, everybody else is late. Um, not that it makes any difference. We'll, we'll get started as soon as we have quorum. Yeah. The second we have quorum.
Well, I will say I appreciate those of you who come a little bit early so that we can actually start on time. Uh, if, it, if we get enough people to come early and start on time, but I do appreciate it. I see that there's someone whose phone number ends in 919 who has their hand up. If your hand up is because you're one of our board members and you need to be brought in, please leave it up. If it's for anything else, we'll call on you after we get the board meeting started. So if, that, if you keep it up, then I know you're somebody to do. Okay, person with that phone number, could you tell me who you are, please? Unmute and tell me who you are. I'm calling in for public comment. Oh, okay, then uh, I'll take your hand down because we're not doing that yet. Thank you. Okay, yep. Hi everyone. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Okay, Perfect. Good. Sorry, I'm multitasking. Hi, Claudia. Hi, guys. Colleen, you're looking lovely today. Thank you very much. Hi, Joan. A Patty. lot of confusion. Hi, Patricia. Patty, I see John Michael as an attended uh, Michael Burbank alternate. If you can let him in, please, as participant. Of course. Thank you. I'm going to try to see. Sorry for my background noise. 
It's all right. Uh, just if you'll just warn me if I don't do something that's in your purview, I'll do it. I could, you know, but um, I need to let in. I don't see anyone else. Hello, John Michael, welcome. Okay, we're at Ian is trying to log in also. So Liz? Ian, Ian. Ah, all the way from Manila, okay. Yes. And Sean is with us. Hi, Sean. One, one more and I'm going to call it to order because we've got so much to do and so very little time. Patty, can you see me? Mm hmm Okay, I'll mute myself again. For those of you who are attending that are not panelists, when we get to the point where we will be asking for public oh, hey. comment, um, I'll you? ask you to raise your hands. But for now, Patty, we'll can you, Patty, sorry, could you let Ian in, please? Uh, he's an attendee, and then we would have quorum. Damn, but I. see him. Ah, there he is. There he is. Oh, me? Okay. Here we are. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. We do. Thank you for joining us, Ian. I hope things are, it's um, Good nighttime. Good evening. It's daytime. Good or first thing in the morning where you are, right? Yes. And good evening over there. Yes. yes. Well, Okay, whoever did that, please do it again. Um, all right, I am going to call the meeting to order at 6.07. Claudia, you let me know if there's anything you need before we get started. Hi, Patty, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just do you hear well, my echo? Do you hear an echo? Yeah. Okay, Here a, we're gonna have to mute one when yeah. we're not talking. Oh, I thought my is muted. your volume. Oh. So turn your volume down. Um, maybe I can go to my room. Yes. All right. All right. Sorry, we're, we're fixing the app. Technical. Technical difficulties. Um, so. So you're calling the meeting to order at. I, it's, it's good. And I want to say, right for those of you who are in the audience, please not raise your hand until we get to a point where we're asking for public comment, unless you are one of the board members and we didn't bring you in properly. Um, 
because we're going to do this. I, I need to know when the hands are up that it's during the right period of time. So much. Um, you will get your chance to put your hand up, I promise. So we, um, we're at, started at 6.07 and Claudia, if you have got your um, stuff there, could you please do roll call? Okay, give me a second. Okay. Sorry, I have a, a split screen thing going on. Patty? Here. Ryan Afari? Is Ryan here? No. Not yet, no. Uh, Pat Barrett? Here. Wendell? Um, mm -hmm. Ian? Is Ian here? Yes, here. Okay, Joan? Here. Uh, Dan Cornell? No. Michael Delajani? No. Uh, Naira, yes? Yes. Colleen Alternate? Present. Tony Hoover? Tony here? Here. Uh, Mindy? Um, Alex Lamondre? Patricia Lewis? Here. Marcus? Is Marcus here? Marcus is not going to be able to. Oh. Uh, Mac? Here. Claudia Me. Robert Newman, I think I saw you. Robert? Yep, okay. here. Hello, everybody. Hi, Robert. Uh, John Swartz? No. Michael Burbank, alternate I saw. I'm um, Michael. And uh, Sean Smith, right next to me. Oh, yes, he's here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, we have quorum, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I will make this announcement that because of the governor's executive order and 2920, because of the COVID-19 crisis, we are doing this meeting entirely telephonically. Uh, those of you who are using telephone call in instead of Zoom, when you, uh, are at, when we have public comment and you wish to speak, you can raise your hand by doing a star nine. The rest of you use the, uh, the hand raise that's within the Zoom program. And for board members, I'm going to tell you this only once. I am counting little blue hands, except you know, for everybody because uh, I, haven't, I haven't made anybody into somebody who can't use it. So please, when we ask for a call, we need to see those hands. Like this isn't gonna work for me. I really need to see where you are. All right, so let's get started. Um, I am gonna move general public comment to the end because I know we've got people who wanna comment on the items and I'm going to go into new business and do general public comment afterwards. So the first thing that we are looking at is a motion to approve a letter to be, to be sent to council member DeLeon, Mayor Garcetti and Chief Moore concerning the security of downtown during the November 2020 election. The letter is in the packet. Um, there have been a couple of small changes to it since it was posted uh, on the draft copy and I wanted to let you know about that. Uh, we have wanted to make sure that no closure would happen until after the polls closed on the third so there would be no problem with the polls closing. And um, we are going to change the wording on until the election is decided to, uh, to, to not be in there and we will see if, if, it, if it is necessary to continue it throughout for more days. So uh, with those two small changes, um, I am going to start by asking for someone to make the motion. I may, this is Pat Barrett. I make the motion that we go ahead with, along with the changes that Patty made to um, the motion doesn't have any changes, so if there are no changes, the letter is a draft. So the, the motion has so it's just a motion. Okay? Okay. Second. Was that? 
Bob Newman. Bob Newman seconded. All right. Oh, I um, thought we were raising our hands. No. Well, you can say second. Um, uh, okay. So I, I need to see, first of all, how many persons wish to speak on public comment on this particular item. So if you would all raise your hands now, because it's going to determine how much time each of you has. I'm waiting. All right, I'm seeing five hands up. That means that we'll be giving everyone one minute to speak. Heidi, I counted uh, eight. Pardon? There's eight people. Eight people want to speak, have their hands up. Oh, there it is. All right, well, we Nine can-, people. We can Nine people have their hands up. I'm sorry, right, I'd like to speak, I don't have a hand raised. 10 people. Uh, make sure people know how to raise their hand. Um, and we really need to know ahead of time because we only have a limited amount of time here. So if there are any of you who are in a group together that can pick a spokesperson and several of you just are represented by that spokesperson, that will cut down on time. We'll give that spokesperson a little bit more. But if we get up, we're already up at 10. If it goes beyond 10, then I'm going to have to give you 30 seconds apiece. We have 11 so, right now. Pardon? 11. I count okay. left hands. Up. All right. Then we'll start. We'll start with thirty seconds apiece. And um, please, if you wish to speak, put your hand up now so we know, so that we make sure that you're that you get onto the list. All right. We don't have speaker cards anymore, so it's really important that we know how many people are going to be speaking ahead of time. All right. Then, um, Robert, can you? Can you uh, do the timing for me on these? I lost him. Yes, I can do the timing. Sorry, my mute was, wouldn't come off. Okay, that's good. Then um, we'll give people 30 seconds and uh, because there are so many of them that want to speak. And I'm going to start with Peter Klune. Uh, yeah, first of all, 30 seconds is outrageous. Um, I want to express vehement opposition to this letter and the curfew. The entire letter lacks thoughtfulness and care. Not only is it riddled with grammatical errors and typos, but you didn't originally consider a curfew that would go into effect before people would finish voting until it was pointed out to you. Earlier this year, we saw curfews imposed with no consideration to our unhoused neighbors. This letter does the exact same. To not mention our most vulnerable neighbors and their safety is an absolute dereliction of duty, especially for a body that represents Skid Row. Beyond the failure to consider obvious concerns, let's be clear that an LAPD enforced curfew will not provide safety and in fact invites violence into our community. We've just seen just in the last two weeks that LAPD is not capable. Okay, of that's 40. Thank you. Shattering teeth and beating journalists. We have seen just this year what a curfew means. LAPD arrested over 2,500 people mm -hmm. for this in May and June. The accounts are harrowing beatings, being denied medical attention, illegal body and vaginal searches, one woman arrested in front of my building reported being subjected to four illegal vaginal searches and police didn't even check her pocket. That is a glimpse. A curfew is a license for police violence, not a guarantee of safety. This letter itself is an open- Sir. I'm sorry, Peter, but other people want to speak too. So you've gone over a minute and I'm going to let the next person speak. Uh, v. Hi there, can you hear me? Can hear you. Amazing. Um, so first of all, I just wanna say that it's weird that this meeting is not being recorded and that you're trying to illegally limit people's time to talk about this issue. Um, this is a total Brown Act violation. And this whole letter is riddled with so much racist dog whistling, the fact that you're trying to in implement a curfew that's going to affect people who are in line to vote, it's going to affect homeless people, and it's going to affect working class people who have to work and who can't be home by 8pm. You really need to reconsider how you're approaching this. And you really need to let people actually voice opinions on this rather than limiting time because you know they're going to disagree with you. I yield my time. Thanks. Um, I have someone who's 
Phone number ends in 911, uh, 919. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool, yeah, I'm calling to oppose this curfew. It's uh, a blatant violation of our First Amendment rights. It's authoritarian. I think it's kind of ironic in an election where we're seeing the possible re-election of a fascist that your uh, response to it is a authoritarian curfew. Um, that's just wrong. Uh, furthermore, we've seen when the Lakers win and the Dodgers win that the LAPD simply doesn't know how to behave themselves and giving them any other reason to brutalize people, they'll absolutely do it. I, I for one, don't want to see another citizen uh, get their eye blown out by a rubber bullet. And I don't think any of you should want to see that either. Um, on top of all of that, <laughs> curfews are unconstitutional, which is why the ACLU sued the city the last time they tried to do this. Um, so yeah, this is a terrible idea. You should absolutely not do it. Uh, yeah, stop. Stop this. Goodbye. Um, Lisa Redmond. Yes, good evening. I am calling in to oppose this letter. I hope that you see it as a draconian measure. Uh, it's unright that it takes away all of our civil liberties to to protest. You know, everybody there willingly is in downtown and you have to accept that this is where people need to come to the civic center to hear their voices and to protest. Just as people who live at the beach have to accept that people come to the beach that aren't from the community. Just because we're coming and we're there and protesting peacefully doesn't ex automatically assume that we need police. The police are busy enough. They don't need to spend extra time watching protesters. It's not right to allow, uh, to take away our rights to amass peacefully and protest. And you're open for a lawsuit as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, someone who's just here is K, the letter K. Yeah, that's me. Hi. Um, yes, uh, I'd like to speak about the uh, letter. Um, the letter is blatantly unconstitutional. Uh, the fact that you all aren't recording this meeting is already a violation of the Brown Act. Um, the letter would enforce a curfew with no regard to the most vulnerable people in our neighborhood. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's hilarious that a group of people would willingly give up their First Amendment rights at a time where the president is doing that already for us, at a time where he said he's not going to leave office. Y'all really want to take the, you know, get rid of the option of getting in the streets and, and fighting back at that? That's nuts. Um, you know, no, no group of citizens should be able to, you know, write this on, on, on behalf of everyone else. Uh, this is a, you guys represent a very narrow set of interests. I'm looking at this screen of uh, a lot of uh, older, whiter people than when I see, you know, people walking around on the street. So this, this doesn't really represent the downtown that I know. And, you know, it's 30 seconds also is definitely not enough. Um, this letter is full of dog whistles that I don't even have time to unpack. Uh, you know, we, we definitely need to get more input on this. Uh, I know for a fact the council member will not be down with this. Uh, even the police chief is going to find this ridiculous because they don't want to deal with this bullshit. Um, so, yeah, I yield the rest of my time. Uh, there are more people online who want to talk. Have a nice night. Thank you. Um, Ms. Eastwood. Hi, um, I'm a resident of DTLA and I also want to strongly oppose this letter, this motion to send this letter to LAPD. Um, as the previous caller stated, um, LAPD is not going to agree to this. This is not the city, the council won't agree to this. Um, the city is being sued. Um, I don't know if you guys remember March 3rd, 2020, but the of the primary election people stood in line for hours outside of the eight and uh i'm sorry I, my mic was cutting out we're losing you we're losing your vocal you want to give her uh restart time or extra time so that yeah, she can go back 
finish her thought. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was I was speaking about the March third primary. Um, people stood in line for hours out after the polls closed, um, as is their right to vote if as long as they're in line um, before eight p.m. So it doesn't make any sense to have a curfew that would start at 930 when we know people at the Ace Hotel in, in March stood in line for longer than that. Um, this is unconstitutional. No one's going to agree to this. It's a waste of your time to even be considering this. I can't believe I voted for some of you in 2018 <laughs> at the last neighborhood council election. Um, but yes, please oppose this. Please stop this. Please do not ever reconsider this. Thank you. Um trying to make sure that I don't miss anyone, but you people are not putting your hands down after you speak. So it's been a little more difficult. Um, Jay Saul. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I strongly oppose this motion. Who exactly is this curfew for? This is just an attempt to silence the voices of the people of Los Angeles. Protesting is a right and not you or anyone will take that away from Angelinos in the event of a political upset. You obviously have failed to think about essential workers in DTLA that travel from jobs such as my father. So to enforce this would mean what exactly? Harassment from cops or citations? Have you thought about our large population of unhoused neighbors? They literally cannot be indoors. Let me remind you that DTLA was built to resemble New York City, a city that never sleeps. Hustle and bustle is normal. So if some feel that they cannot sleep in an urban setting, perhaps the suburbs is more suited for them. Additionally, you fail to note that this noise and disruption is triggered by LAPD. The shooting, the sirens, the helicopters, the violence. Please go, to, go speak to LAPD about that because that's their doing. This proposed curfew is juvenile. It should not be passed. Thank you. All right, I would very much appreciate if you've already spoken, please put your hand down so that I can find the people who have not spoken yet. All right. Um, Kendall K, I don't believe that I've gotten to you yet. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so um, I just want, wanted to say that this uh, this curfew is unconstitutional, it's illegal, and it, it's uh, going to be harmful to literally every single person, including yourselves. Um, and the fact that you guys won't even record this meeting as a violation of the Brown Act um, is proof that you don't care about what's constitutional and what really matters. Um, so I'm not exactly surprised, but you should not be passing this curfew. Um, it, it affects unhoused people. It will affect unhoused people disproportionately who literally, again, cannot be inside. And, um, and it also just affects people who are living in downtown LA. If you don't want to be in downtown LA and you don't want to experience life in downtown LA, don't live in downtown LA. Literally just don't. Um, like, uh, like it's just, it is, uh, it, it, it is unconstitutional. There is a lawsuit going on. Like I literally don't understand where you're coming from and there is no reason for you to even implement this no matter where you're coming from. So it's, it's, there's no reason it affects everyone negatively, including yourselves because you're limiting everyone's First Amendment rights to protest and you're limiting um, every, everyone else. So it's, it's, there's, there's, this is a lose-lose situation. And if you pass this, you will suffer the consequences legally. Thank you very much. Right, I'm going to ask one more time. If you've already spoken, please lower your hand so that I can make sure that I get to everyone. Okay. Um, this is very difficult. Um, Zach, Zach, have you spoken yet? No, I have not. Okay, good. Then please do. Okay. So I think everyone has done a really good job of covering all the reasons that this is really a short-sighted, um, uh, request here. It's already been defeated at the city level. They gave up when the ACLU was going to sue. It's unconstitutional. But I, I really, the thing I want to focus on is I think this sets a terrible, terrible precedent for neighborhood councils to start writing letters to the city 
uh, council to ask the city council to implement a curfew in their neighborhood. Where does it stop? I mean, any neighborhood council can now point to this ill thought out and, and poorly thought out motion and say, well, DTLA did it. Why can't we do it? We don't want we, we don't want anybody coming into our neighborhood, uh, you know, this time of year during Halloween. So we're going to ask for a curfew. Really, really awful precedent setting here. So with that, I will yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask, please, there are so many hands up and I'm really unable without the helper that I usually have doing this. It's very difficult for me to uh, see who is still uh, still required. Um, all right, well, I, here's one name I know I, I haven't called. Can I make a yet. suggestion? Maybe have everybody bring their hand down and people who haven't spoken to bring their hand back up. I can ask them to bring their hand down if they've already spoken, they don't seem to want to do it. So um, I'll just well, do the best I can. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we can just keep asking, you know, have you spoken and then, yeah, you got it. Sorry. Um, Candace Crote, I know you have not spoken, so I'm going to bring you in. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, Candace from CBS2 News, thank you so much for your time. Um, I've heard a lot uh, from, uh, it sounds like residents of downtown LA, which it appears that this letter is more so geared towards um, businesses and business owners. Uh, but my question is, and I don't know if I have an outdated letter or uh, outdated draft, but I didn't see a specific time for the curfew outside of what was uh, printed as far as uh, please give this neighborhood the protection of a nighttime curfew from November 3rd until the election is decided. Some of the concerns I did hear uh, was about disenfranchising or people feeling like they won't have enough time to get out there to vote. So I'm just wondering if this is something that can be adjusted um, or you know, even eliminated. It sounds like a lot of people are against it, but does it give you know people enough time uh, to vote? And um, Outside of that, other than, you know, the curfew being uh, the biggest issue we've seen, obviously, with the looting with the Lakers and whatnot. Um, but what are it, it, these are more so questions, just kind of, you know, what are um, the other concerns that would really warrant a, a curfew that so many people appear to be against? So just a couple of questions there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just for the record. During public comment, we can't answer questions, but later when we get to board comment, we'll try to answer all of the things that have been brought up as questions. Um, all right. Ricci, have, have we spoken to Ricci yet? I think. There. No, you have, have not yet. All right, well then we are now. Well, I mean, I don't know what the fuck you guys think you're doing not recording this this meeting. It's a violation of the Brown Act. Clearly, you know that. I don't know why you're not recording it. Shout out my guy, Adrian, that is recording it. So you guys aren't going to skate by. We're going to have documentation of this bullshit meeting of everyone calling in and saying how fucking stupid you guys are. This is clearly unconstitutional. The city and the county got fucking sued over this. Why do you, like, I don't know who drafted this and like who thought they were like smart drafting this. It was, it was deemed illegal. You're shaking your head, Patty. Like, are, are you the one behind this? Like, this is dumb as shit. Um, the 30 seconds of public comment is ridiculous. Um, you guys clearly, and then some lady said something about the Lakers looters. The only people that are rioting in Los Angeles and have been rioting for the entire summer is LAPD. LAPD has shot people with rubber bullets. I have personally been dragged and tackled out into the streets when I was attempting to leave a protest by LAPD. Why would you want to put that power in their hands unless you intentionally want to subject people to that abuse? And with, are you guys part of the fucking Proud Boys? Like when Donald Trump said, stand, stand by, like, and now you guys are gonna to want to implement a curfew around the election? 
Are you guys part of the white supremacist group, the Proud Boys? Yo, if you guys don't want to live in fucking downtown LA, go to Pasadena. The suburbs are right there, right up the freeway. If you don't want to live in, you don't want to live in DTLA, get the fuck out. You know, like, I don't know what you guys think you're doing here. This, this is clearly unconstitutional. So whoever wrote this, you're dumb as shit. You know, like the county and the city were sued by the ACLU and they lost. Sir, you're over uh, two minutes. Thank you. Well, you guys are fucking shittiest, the shittiest neighborhood council. You're all dumb for thinking this could pass and you want to subject people to abuse. So I'm glad to see the webinar is now being recorded. Great job, guys. I wonder why you decided to do that. Is that because everyone called I, you out I, on I, it? I and it could have been a potentially, out. it could have potentially been a, a Brown Act violation. Okay, you're wow. done. Wow. Yeah. Great job. You, um, you well done. done. Good job. Thank you. Um, I see four, we did speak with Richie. Did we speak with Jasmine? Does anyone remember? No, we haven't. Okay, Jasmine. Interesting, because that's not the, all right. Um, basically, I don't think I could add a whole lot more than what everybody else has said. This is pretty fascist. Um, it does not protect the residents. Um, I've lived here longer than um, probably most of you, except maybe Sean. Um, I am not even going to bring up, bring up um, on the house at this point, because it's pretty obvious that you guys don't care about them. Um, I used to be somebody who supported, who bought the Kool-Aid from LAPD until I saw how they treated protesters the last time they had a curfew. Um, and it was insane. They arrested a lot, not just protesters, they arrested a lot of downtown LA residents. They wound up turning a lot of the residents and putting myself against them. So um, I don't trust them to be in charge of anything here. And um, a curfew is basically suppression of voters' rights. It's suppression of our First Amendment rights. The Civic Center is open to everybody. Um, what might be amenable is closing off, um, is leaving the Civic Center open um, for everybody to come in um, and closing off access to other parts of the street. But even that, this is a, this is a very contentious election um, where we've already got to be worried about voter suppression. And now here is our neighborhood council, one of whom has me blocked on her Twitter in violation of the Brown Act. Um, telling us basically that they're just okay with this. They're okay with this. And uh, why wouldn't you be? I mean, LAPD is all Trump endorsed and you guys are all basically in bed with LAPD too. So that's it. I mean, there's nothing else I can add. I just hope you listen that every single person that has called in on this has said, and they're all residents, has said that they oppose this. You don't speak for us, okay? Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you. Oh Lord, who, I'm so confused with this. Um, Melinda. Hey, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this brief, but I just want everybody who's opposed to the curfew to understand that I don't think this was made as a malicious attempt to suppress anyone. I think it was done very hastily and it could have been thought out a little bit better, but ultimately, as Jasmine was saying, there are other solutions. It is better to try to come up with productive solutions rather than reduce everyone in the neighborhood to any sort of categorical evil. That being said, I'm a business owner in the area. I've been in downtown for about 12 years, working and or living. I've talked to other business owners and people are scared. There are a lot of people who are immigrants who own businesses who are worried about their livelihood they're already struggling and their employees are very worried about having a work to come back to and it's completely valid and i just want people to understand that thank you thank you um devin hi can you hear me yes we can 
Hi, uh, my name is Devin Manny. I just wanted to tell you that you are a remarkably illegitimate group of condo dwelling bastards. This proposal doesn't just infringe upon residents' First Amendment rights, it infringes on the very idea that any of you have any sense of morality beyond will I get eight hours of sleep while people are continually brutalized and disenfranchised in the streets beneath you and fascists are propelled into power. They are not installed into those positions by flyover states or red state hicks, they are put there gradually by neighborhood and city level officials who believe like you beyond any sense of reason that your right to a peaceful night and gradually increased real estate prices should supersede the rights of those who will be dead on the streets in years. Thank you, fuck all of you. Okay. Um... Maybe, maybe, M A E B E A girl, you're on. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Maybe. My pronouns are she, her. And I'm um, also a neighborhood council member serving on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. Uh, but tonight I'm speaking as an individual and a stakeholder of downtown LA. Um, before the pandemic hit, I was um, producing a drag brunch at the Standard Hotel every weekend. Anyways, I digress. Um, I'm calling in because I just wanted to oppose um, this curfew um, idea for election week. I think it's a terrible idea. Um, speaking as somebody who's been out protesting um, in the past several months, um, I was actually tear gassed and, you know, people within feet of me had rubber bullets shot into their face. And if that happened to you, I think that you would really disagree about sending the police into the streets um, to take on protesters. Um, I think it's totally against the idea of American values um, and the right to protest. Um, downtown LA is the site of our civic center, and that's where we should be protesting. And I'm sorry if people don't get a decent night sleep, um, but many of us who are in disenfranchised communities have not had a decent night's sleep in four years. So if we want to go out and protest, I think that's perfectly okay. And I do not agree with this curfew at all. Um, respectfully yours. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, PPLS City Council. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, uh, Fall back in, and, and since you guys are limiting public comment to thirty seconds, uh, you know, to make sure everyone gets their gets their fair hearing on this. Um, again, the ACLU sued the city and the county over this. Um, you guys stopped recording. I don't know why. Why did you stop recording that? You turned it on, so you know how to do it. Why did why did the, why did the recording turn off though? Honestly, can can anyone that belongs to this neighborhood council tell me why the recording started last time I was speaking and now it's off? No one. You're all are just fucking I dumb. Believe, and I believe I believe you understand. Emotion that you drafted. Comment, we cannot and, answer. Uh, and clearly, you all don't know what you're doing. You just don't know what you're doing. Like you guys are so inept. Why do you guys want this position? You guys suck at it. Um, Patty, time is up. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Patty, um, if possible, can we bring the recording back on? I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do that. All right. It's just uh, like, we'll really get as soon as I know. I believe that I've spoken to everyone. If you have spoken already, take your hand down because, as far as I, I think, everyone has been represented, and I'm going to close public comment unless. All right, so Patty, uh, um, we God. still have several comments, uh, uh, members of the public that still haven't spoken. Okay, is Camillo one of them? I believe Camillo Sorry. and Lionel are still members of the public right. that haven't spoken. And those will be our last two, and then we will be closing public comment. Camillo, you're on. You should be. Where are you? Um, just a minute, I'm having a little trouble. There we go, Camilla, now you're there. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool, uh, I, I'd just like to be brief. Um, there, there's a lot of street vendors out on in downtown LA that would not really 
be aware of this in time. And I don't think, I think it's just very rushed. I mean, I understand the motive in terms of the concern that you'll have about unrest, but I just don't think that a curfew is a proper response based on the legal response that it'll get from people like ACLU and uh, the exposure that it'll have to um, innocent bystanders to uh, LAPD violence, as we've seen from Lakers celebrations and Dodgers celebrations where the city didn't adequately uh, give people space to be in the streets when they knew it was gonna happen. And they just said, don't do it because of COVID, which was a wildly inadequate response. And that exposed people to violence from LAPD. And I just don't think we need more of that in downtown. And I think the curfew would do that. So um, I would like you to explore other avenues that you uh, that would you know, actually benefit public safety than you know, a draconian curfew that, that just kind of speaks more to an emotional response than a rational response. Time and it doesn't up. take into account, you know, stakeholders in Time downtown like the street vendors that everybody loves when they go out and get drunk in the streets and they go out and party. All everybody loves a bacon wrapped hot dog, but all of a sudden, you know, you guys completely count them out when it's when it's uh, when you guys get scared about things like this. And they're not scared because they're immigrants that came from worse conditions. They can handle this shit. So uh, yeah, I just like you guys to to completely reconsider and come up with something that adequately addresses public safety instead of being wildly irrational. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last person is Lionel. Hi, good evening. Uh, hi, good evening. Thank you for having me here today. I'm calling because I would like to comment on this um, issue. Um, I'm concerned about more rioting and, and vandalism and, and people getting hurt. And even though um, it's kind of hard to, it's, you know, to please both sides, but I think that if people continue to um, vandalize, some people, not all, but I guess it affects everybody. And um, we had to take certain measures to protect small businesses and other people who want to protest or who want to um, be activists or peaceful, but there's some who are kind of out of hand and they're ruining it for everyone else. So I think we should maybe just for a few days or nights um, impose a curfew maybe for a few hours to see how it works. Hopefully people would somehow come down and not, not resort to violence or anything like that. That's my thoughts, thank you. Thank you. All right, I am officially closing public comment right now. Nara, I wanna tell you, I have never appreciated you more in my life trying to do your job and mine at the same time. You are wonderful. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to close public comment. I am going to start by answering some of the questions that were asked. First of all, there is nothing in this about 930. I don't know where 930 came from. Several people mentioned it, but no, 930 is not here. Uh, secondly, uh, yes, I shake my head when I hear people swearing during a meeting where you're not supposed to use bad language. Uh, I did have the legal right to cut you off immediately. I did not because I wanted to let you continue with what you were saying, but uh, just in general, bad language is not allowed at these meetings. Uh, third, recording cannot, according to the Brown Act, we cannot forbid someone to record our meetings. Needing to record them is not a part of the Brown Act. When the Brown Act was written, there was no way to record the meetings particularly. So it certainly is not part of it. We cannot refuse recording. And I believe someone started it up at some point and took it off. No one here has started recording or stopped recording. And so if you wish to record, you're certainly welcome to, but uh, it is not, it does not say in the Brown Act that it, we have to record these meetings. So I just would like you to be aware of that. We don't have to hear you say it anymore. Um, I am trying to remember. Uh, uh, Patty, point of order. Uh, should I officially cancel my uh, GLC meeting? It, it's up to you, of course. I can't tell you one way or the other. Yeah, I, I think. I think yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do all right. that. All, all right. right. Um, I'm just going to make a couple of comments and I'm going to open it up to the board. The uh, intention of the people who contacted me Wednesday morning, and I got a whole bunch of contacts Wednesday morning after what happened here Tuesday night, was not 
specifically to have a curfew. It was, that was the thing that was suggested to me, but specifically what we want to do is protect our businesses and the people who live here from more violence, from more graffiti, from more rioting. There is nothing about rioting in the first amendment. Everybody has the right to speak. They have the right to assemble. You do not have the right to break up someone else's business. I am more than happy to have this letter reflect a really great idea for securing our businesses and the people who live here. And I'm not talking about them sleeping well at night. I'm talking about real damage to what's going on. If people have better ideas, we would love to hear them and put them into this letter. I haven't gotten any from anybody. I have not gotten one, one person who contacted me about this, who said, I've got a really great idea for a way we can ask them to protect us. With that said, I am willing to have anything that you people want to do with this letter done. Let's see where we are. And I think I'm just going to go, please don't make your squares move because I'm going to go by squares. And I'm going to start with Rian. Thanks, Patty. Um, so I think I, and I think, you know, the premise, the intentions are good. Um, this letter, I think the concerns that members brought up are uh, the public are very valid as well. I think one ways to maybe approach this and maybe not sort of, um, how would you put it, not sort of use the term a curfew in a sense, because I think we all want to see something done, not necessarily to the level of a curfew necessarily, but to ensure that, you know, everybody's rights are still available, but also the protection of the communities is, is, um, is withheld um, during these contentious times. And I would actually recommend, um, and I'll probably propose a motion maybe later on this meeting to consider possibly adding a clause to this uh, draft pr proposal or draft request to the city to consider um, leaving the Civic Center as sort of um, an area that's, that's specifically designated for people to assemble to whatever degree necessary while possibly also considering maybe increased uh, presence of law enforcement or increased patrols or whatever the case may be for possible looting in the in sort of business of residential sectors. So I think that's something that- What you said before though, the, the draft letter, I'm sorry, the draft letter is not gonna require motions to discuss it and decide what we wanna do and then vote on uh, accepting the letter as it is. So we don't have to have a motion for every change. I'm sorry, I, I, you cut off the first half, what were you saying? We don't have to have a motion for every wording change. We need to get the words, talk about them, decide what we like best, come to a consensus, and then vote on the letter as modified. So we don't have to have a motion every single time. Okay. But if you could write up those ideas, they are excellent. Uh, and you moved. I told you not to move your square and you moved it. Now I'm going to have to figure out who I haven't spoken to. Tony, I think you're up. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess to start, I, I heard what everyone said in the comments. And uh, I agree with some of the core things that they were saying in terms of um, uh, a possible abuse of their of their constitutional rights in, in enacting a um, a curfew like this. However, um, we were elected here to represent the stakeholders in downtown, whether they live here, uh, they're employed here, they're business owners here. And over the last several months, we've had tens of millions of dollars worth of vandalism, looting. There's been physical assaults, not by police officers or not just by police officers, but by people who were coming into downtown. We've had people in the last uh, outburst shooting guns in the air. Um, the noise, I'm not, you know, I, I, the noise is, is one thing, but it's these other things that are really a major problem. And the business community is reeling from this. Um, as this continues on and on and on, I was hoping that the people that were commenting uh, would provide some sympathy for these business owners and people living here and offer maybe a solution, an alternative that we can look at. But I really didn't hear any of that. All I heard was opposition. Um, and um, it's really disheartening. I was really hoping I would hear some people that would actually offer some solutions or some alternatives that we can go with other than with something like this. But um, 
we really have to support our community in um, in really kind of dealing with this this issue. It can't continue. It can't continue going on and on like this. That can't be an excuse. Uh, they're, 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 Constitutional rights cannot be an excuse for trampling on the rights of other people. Thank you. Um, Nara? Nara, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Sorry, I was trying to multitask. Um, I understand uh, people constitutional right also and, and the frustration that it's coming from. I'm, I have nothing against protesting, but what we've seen in the past few months, it's nothing simple and it's nothing peaceful. I'm a, a downtown resident and I'm a downtown business owner and I've been hurt. I've been truly hurt. So I, my only revenue is coming from my businesses and I lost a lot of money because of the damages that has been done during the first riot. And I like us to take some action to prevent this. So whether, whatever it is, whether it's a curfew with certain timing, any action, but we need to protect the residents and we need to protect the business owners also. That's all my comment. And I'm heartbroken for us. Sean? Yeah, hi there. Um, you know, I, I moved to downtown in 1990 when I was 15 years old. Um, it's, it's our home. And, um, you know, what we went through with the Lakers and the Dodgers, that wasn't protesting. That was looting, damage. People couldn't go outside because it was so unsafe. And so it's what the, our most basic need and right should be public safety. And being able to just like not get shot at, not get swung at, not get hit with a scooter. We should be able to feel safe. And that should be, that's like housing and um, safety are our most important, you know, needs. And, you know, there's, so there's safety and, you know, there's like small businesses. So these small businesses are, you know, every kind of ethnicity, every kind of social economic group. And so if you have a small business that is impacted and closed, those people are going to lose their income. They're going to end up homeless. They're going to, potentially end up abusing alcohol or drugs to, to kill, to numb the pain. And so people's lives are affected. It's not like they're greedy and they wanna like, you know, just, no, people are just trying to live and exist. And that's what it's about. It's, I wanna be able to, and, and you know, I hear a lot of different voices in the community. I am, and so people, you know, this has been um, talked about. People are like, and I, I think that there's like a, a subset of people that are voicing a concern and, and, that's, and that's great. And we get it. And, you know, the on house, yes. Um, I think during the last curfew, um, I think that officers are able to discern who is, you know, homeless in downtown and who is from out of area and who is coming into downtown to be destructive. I am all for protesting. I think it's amazing. The Women's March, incredible. Prop 8, I was down here protesting. Oh my goodness. That's what it's all about. And protesting is super important. But you know, safety and being able to live and not get shot at and hurt, that's such a, it's a basic need that we have to safeguard for the people that live in downtown LA. I'm sorry. You know, we, it's, it's not about when, it's not about if, it's when things are gonna go off. And to call our panel, you know, Trumpers and bootlickers is bull. You know, we, I think you have a really diverse group of people that really care and they're taking their time to donate their time, 
they're here because they love downtown this panel and and to like to knock them and it's it's not fair you know these people are are giving their time to be here and they're giving their time every week and showing up for downtown LA so I'm sorry you know it's it's not for it's not fun you know but we're here because we care I loved it's in my DNA my dad lived here my mom used to work here it's just it's my home you know and it breaks my heart when it gets trashed and and when we lose those little small businesses where are we going to get a slice of pizza where are we going to shop where are we going to get those basic needs you know and then downtown will turn into a big ghost town no one will want to be here and this town will die so that's it you know we have to protect everyone and the people that are coming to take advantage of the cover is that's what we're trying to protect against. You know, it's not the protesters. That's awesome. But it's the people, the opportunists that are using this cover, you know, something as cover to take advantage, you know? So we're just, uh, we're just trying to exist here and we're just trying to live and be safe and, and live another day. It's, it's pretty basic. It's that basic. Thank you, Sean. Um, Joan? Nope, you're still muted. Okay. There you are. I agree with Sean. I think that people really don't understand how scary it's been and that there are actually factions of people probably Proud Boys or are other kinds of groups that are down here doing excessive damage that they're not Laker fans and they're not, you know, they're not Dodger fans, but they were in the Dodger fans and the Laker fans contributed a lot of havoc and a lot of, uh, you know, vandalism over the last two events. I do, I do really do believe that the, uh, that the police department also aided and abetted this craziness that was going on here. Um, I, I feel like if if we could work with this, if work with um, the police to try to uh, stop the freeway entrance, you know, in other words, to uh, put limits on people coming into downtown, so there isn't all this craziness, not toward Civic Center, but you know, all around the areas that have been experiencing the true vandalisms with the small businesses. That's my thought. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Pat? Um, first of all, I just want to say that um, what we're asking for is not unconstitutional. It's for the protection of the people. What I have seen from protesters is not peaceful demonstrations. It is destroying property. Um, there was a shooting. There were shots going off. People breaking into certain people's property that private property that they shouldn't have. And we are just trying to protect people to be safe for now and hopefully in the future that like as Sean said and other people have said, we don't want downtown Los Angeles to be abandoned. For four restaurants that are in my neighborhood, no, five, four restaurants, 50% of them have closed. Two, there's only two remaining and a lot of other ones are really hurting. So if the, this vandalism continues and it's, and even my, even Bid has said that a lot of the people that came in was gang related, you know, from the graffiti and so forth. And that's what it was told to me and other people within the community. And I believe we're all here for the protection of serving the community and doing what is right for our stakeholders and not for them to suffer. I am for peaceful, demonstrations. We are allowed to go out there and speak our peace. And that's how things are changed, but not by violence. And this is for protection, for peace, for the community, for safety, and for hopefully things to open up in the future for new and better businesses and for other people to open up as well as businesses come back to Los Angeles. And we are here again to serve for the people. Thank you. 
in his head. Mac. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so um, I, I understand that everyone is angry, uh, but, but I, I just caution us to, to not be, um, to not go with our gut and, and use profanity and excess. And a lot of what I heard uh, was bullying and false statements and, and things that we are ashamed that we see in the, in the public today and we don't like in others. And I just caution us um, to try to work together. It's not us and them here. It's us and us here. I, I did, there, 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 was, there was a person that spoke up and, and shared um, something that, that I think we could probably add here. And that is that uh, people are very concerned about closing everything. Um, maybe there are some opportunities because, because many of us are, are frightened every, every time a big group of people comes downtown. Uh, celebrations aren't celebrations anymore. Two days ago, that wasn't a celebration to me. I hoped and prayed that people would behave themselves. And when there was fires on my corner and people tagged again and broke windows again, I just thought, you know, I, 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 I still love baseball, but I, I, I don't love the people that come here and, and destroy my streets. Uh, and the only thing that helped at the end the other day was when the police finally came and, and pushed everyone away. And that was like one or two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what the answers are, but I'm sure that the answers aren't arguing and yelling and calling each other names. I'm sure it's that you guys have some wonderful ideas and I want you to tell us that. And Patty, I don't know, I, like I said, we, we've canceled our GLC meeting. Is there an opportunity if, if, if another opportunity, if people will just give us ideas to open it up again? Uh, because I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't wanna go through nights again where where there's explosions and, 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 and more restaurants and, and, and small mom and pa shops are being vandalized again and they can no longer afford to open up in my neighborhood. And, and I hear, sounds like bombs going off and they're, and they're igniting my building. Um, and and I just don't go question. out. So if is there an opportunity to reopen the, the, the public comment right. let, let me and, answer and, that Matt. and ask for only positive comments yeah. to change this let me let me answer that if it is the will of this committee which it might be very well might be to do a rewrite on the request based on the concept which i think you're all coming up pretty much then yes we can do that if there are people out there who have ideas that they can help us with i can open up a public comment for that if it becomes a problem where people just get on again to swear at us or to yell, uh, we will have to turn them off. But if it is what you would like to do after we've gone through everyone, we can discuss that concept. Absolutely. Okay. It's my will to get this right. And yeah, I agree. That's my, that is my comment. Um, and I, you know, I, I value everything you guys have to say. Get, you got through the anger part. Now let's get to the positive stuff and let's fix this as best we know. Yeah. Amen. All right, now everybody's moved around, so I got to figure out who I've spoken to. Um, Patricia. Okay, me? Yes. Um, I'm very specifically concerned about fire. Um, we live in, most of us live in high rises downtown. Um, and the fireworks were out of control. It's amazing there has not been a major fire. And so I, I would love to hear suggestions about. How do we stop that from happening? How do we how do we prevent a fire from happening? A major fire downtown. That's it. That's it. That's my major concern. I'm very concerned about that, and I would love to hear suggestions. Robert.
Robert Newman, you need to unmute. Oh, we may have lost him again. Let me see if he's on the other side. See, what we'll do is we'll arm everyone with super soakers, and that'll be it. I'll, I'll, we'll wait for him to come back. Ian, are you there? Ian? I'm seeing Ian as, uh, in attendees list also. Yeah, I think sometimes when their name comes up, it means that they're somehow losing their connection. We'll give them a few minutes to come back. Let me take a look and see who I have not spoken to. Uh, John Michael, would you like to speak? No, Another thanks. one with you. Oh, good. You are going to be able to. Very good. John Michael? No comment. No comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Robert, are you there? Patty, Ian is asking uh, to bring him back from attendance. And I'm home if you want to let, give me access so I could help out. You know, I've already given you access the minute you showed up. If you could do that, I'd appreciate it. I don't see him. Okay. Uh, I have to log in from my computer and I have to come in as an attendee also. All right. That will work for me. So who have I missed now? Uh, Claudia. Hi. Um, thanks, Patty. So how do I start this? Um, being a person who was probably safely to say probably the only person in this room who was born during a dictatorship, um, I have in teaching president, I have uh, fought for equality in Brazil with Lula, with Fete, you know, everybody knows how it goes down there. And um, very sympathetic when it comes to other people's First Amendment rights, um, whether I like it or not. Um, and, um, but I wanna say that what we're missing here what we're really missing here is leadership from the city, mm -hmm. right? Why should we have to even put ourselves in the position of having to come up with solutions for, for a huge problem? This is not like something small, like our trash cans are disappearing. Like where is the accountability for our, I mean, I know that because of corruption, we went with our representation for so long, but it's like, we know that this is gonna happen. I have a person that I talk to on a daily basis who used to be part of the graffiti community, who used to break things, who used to have the assets, who's no longer doing that. And I said, why do they do that? And they said, he said to me, well, the city knows this is gonna happen. They should, be, they should have been prepared. And I'm like, we're getting no leadership. Everybody's hush hush. No one wants to panic everybody. No mm -hmm. one wants to tell the businesses you should, you should really protect, board it up, do what you can. You know, no one. A lot of us in downtown don't have second homes to go to. A lot of us are not wealthy. We can't just be like, oh, you know, we don't like what's going on here. So I'm just going to take off for like four days and go to my beach house that my father owns. We don't have that option. A lot of us don't. Uh, talking about our, our unhoused constituents, right? Like, do you think that they're more at danger when we do have all these things happening or, 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 or when we just have like a regular night when we don't have the riots, right? Uh, so every decision they're vulnerable to because they're out in the streets and we really have to fix that problem. Now, back to the subject of the solutions that we were talking about. A lot of people were saying what if we removed all the scooters because they're being used as weapons? You know, is it the chance that we can talk to Metro or LADOT to have the scooter companies come and pick them up? I don't know, this is not, uh, I, I didn't bring this up, but I'm translating information that I heard from other constituents that they think it's a great idea. You know, what I do know 
is that time and time and again, I talk to the business constituents, I talk to the residents, and it's not about, oh, this is too noisy for me. It's all about the sense of uncertainty and PTSD. When you are in your home and you don't feel safe, and the, the answer is not to move. Moving is abandoning the ship, mm -hmm. right? Like we're supposed to make this place better. So the answer is not, oh, we're afraid, so we should move, right? Or we don't, we don't like it here. We all like to go out, you know, and uh, go to restaurants and enjoy th this town. This is not about we, we, we are old people who are white and that we want to shut, you know, we want to shut down downtown and make it into Woodland Hills. This is not about it. This is about securing jobs of people of color. Like my friend Joe Salsworth, he has the little shop LA. He got, mm -hmm. he, he's a black man, you know, with a, a child, a toddler, you know, and like people say, oh, uh, his insurance will cover. It's not that. It's walking up to being a mom and pop shop and walking up, see your whole entire shit just fucking destroy overnight. Sorry about the square word. But it's like, it's painful to see because a business is small or big. They are providing jobs to people who, who, who are workforce that we don't have an Amazon headquarters here. We're not talking, we don't have like executives or maybe we do, maybe we have some buildings that are executives. But the things that are really, really hurting Okay, so they hit the foot locker and that's not really that, that, you know, they can survive. But how about the place right next door that they got swept in the way? You know what I mean? It's like a big sweep. It's not like it just, you know, big corporations get hit. It's everything. And unless I know that people come visit here and they feel like now town is their home and they didn't know what's going on here. But unless you live here, and unless you're really talking to the businesses and to the homeless people, both, you can't really grasp the, the amount of hurt of downtown. From having the houseless people, uh, people, you know, battling addiction heavily and others selling it to them that know that they have issues. And at the same time, okay, we're dealing with that. We're trying to house people, but now we can't spend that time focusing on housing because now we got to focus on freaking cleaning. Like, how can, we, how can we tackle everything all at once? And why is the city not having a plan? And that's my problem with this. Like, why doesn't anybody who gets paid $200,000 can come up with a plan. Why us who spend 15, 20 hours a week, you know, engaging people, trying to talk to constituents and find out what is it that they're, they're lacking. Like Naira and I are planning a, a, a fund for Armenia, you know, to, to try to raise money for Armenia. How can we do that when then like the very next day I have business owners calling me. I think I spoke too much. Uh, business owners are calling me and just saying, I'm giving up. We, we do need to move on to the next thing. Sorry, yeah. I, I just, okay. but my, my, my point of the thing is, like why is the city using us as scapegoats to come up with ideas when they have none? Like why? That's my, that's my beef. Okay. I'm gonna try Ian one more time. He is here twice on my screen. One of those has to be working. There you I'm go, here, Ian. I'm here, Patty. Yeah, how are you? Good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I had to go mobile. Uh, anyway, um, I just think that uh, we need we need uh, law and order in downtown. That's what we need. And we're not limiting people's constitutional rights here. I just want to let people know that we're, we may be limiting, but it's for everyone's good. Those people who come or who live in downtown or who are in, who are in for... Uh, uh, destructive of uh, destruction of people's other properties or hurting people's lives have to, has to leave. They're the ones who have to leave downtown. And also, we don't. Uh, we as council members, we are here to serve, and we don't deserve the shit that what we we uh, we we got earlier, 
we're serving here, you know, and we don't need to hear whatever bullshit everyone's trying to to uh, to throw at us. And that I said, you know, um, I just want everything well in our home in downtown Los Angeles and people's lives are, are important. So people have to, they, people have to respect that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. All right. The squares have moved around a whole lot. So please, is there any one of the board members that I missed? Tell me. Okay. Very good. Then uh, I'm going to put this forward. It would seem that we have a reasonable consensus that we know what the goal is, which is to stop the destruction, the looting, all of that, not let it happen, but that perhaps the first ideas brought forth were not the best ways to handle it. That's a perfectly acceptable way to start this discussion. Unfortunately, we need something. Uh, we have a couple of possibilities. We can end this letter by saying that we're just asking the city to do everything in their power to make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, I'm not sure that all of us agree that that will happen. Um, we can look for additional solutions that we might present to them. Or of course, our third solution is to just take no action at all. So at this point, I kind of like to get a feel from the committee, from the board. Do we want to uh, look at trying to find alternative ways of solving this problem? Or do we want to just lay it on the back of the city and come up with a paragraph that basically says we need to we need we need to have this problem solved and we're very seriously wanting you to do something about it. I, I, those not those words of course. So um, where where do we want to go? And I think what I'd like to do is everybody put your hand, your little blue hand down. We've got some little blue hands up. Tony. No, you cannot go to the potty. You have to, you'll have to raise your hand later. Um, uh, point, point, point of information. I, I propose you, you, you give us three options. One, it at, have people vote as is. Two, um, the first option you said is that uh, we we write it as with alternate solutions. And the third option is we write it with just do something and don't provide a solution. A, B, and okay. C. All right. Well, then let me do some straw polling here. Blue hands only, please. Um, and that would be how many people feel that the letter as it is is where we should be. Okay, I'd say that we have a definite consensus that we need to do more work. Okay, great. I kind of agree with that myself. Let's let's take a look at it then. So then, um, let's see, show of hands, how many of you feel that we can rewrite with solutions, that we can come up with solutions? Okay, well, that's most of you. So, all right, then that's where we'll go from here. We will start looking at other ways to ask for this help that we're looking for. Um, and I will be at some point opening this up to public comment, but I'm going to say this again. The only public comment that we will allow at that time will be public comment where you are giving us help with our solution making, not not anymore. Uh, we've already heard the people who don't want to have the um, the curfew. That curfew is not what we're discussing right now. I just would open it up and I would ask that you please be respectful of that. I will open it up for people who have ideas and suggestions for ways that we might be able to present this letter. Point of order. Point Excuse of me. order. Point of order. Yeah, go ahead. It's Rayon speaking. Technically, Patty, under the Brown Act and under the First Amendment, we cannot, if you do open this up to public comment, you cannot restrict the right. conversation yeah, unless they are off topic of the agenda items. So people that would be speaking are allowed under law to basically use any language right, they want or discuss it. So I would be able to do that. 
Yeah. So I, that's what I was going to say. I would caution you based off of the wording that you're proposing is either we're opening ourselves up to Brown Act violations and First Amendment violations if we were to restrict, restrict our speech, or what you can do is you can postpone public comment, or better yet, during the next agenda item, there's a time in between you can have people speak again. All right, that's what we will do then. Thank you. Um, so, I, I'm going to take notes about, this is a secretary question, I'm going to start taking notes about solutions. Yes, but do not put them in the minutes because they would just be at this point discussion. I'm just going to write everything down and then you can tell me what's going to stay, okay. what's not, so that, we, so that it's, we have some sort of organization, right? That's great. Okay. All right, so um, Tony, I don't know why, but I have a feeling that you'd be the right person to start this off. Well, I, I um, Joan actually, I had, I've been talking with a friend of mine earlier today about this topic and um, and Joan actually echoed something that I had mentioned to a friend and I thought, you know, what if we can offer up a solution where we somehow restrict um, or constrict access into and out of downtown for a certain time period um, where we would be most vulnerable to attack. Um, and I think Joan mentioned something to that effect earlier in her comment. So that might be one alternative is that, you know, there might be some kind of um, an enforced um, restriction on, um, on access into downtown over a certain time period. Um, I'm sorry, Tony, I'm gonna to have to stop you. Uh, where did our where did our board members go? We have people who disappeared, and at this point, I'm only showing eleven, which means we cannot continue. What does anybody know? Why all of a sudden people were disappearing from my screen? Patty, you're correct. There are eleven board members present. All right, then I need to. Uh, when somebody find out, what, so I, my guess is that some people got kicked off. We need to wait till they can come back. Could somebody do some texting or, or something to find Patty, out where people? Point of order: You need to call the meeting at recess due to lack of quorum. I, I do understand that. I'm asking if there are people who can find out. I'm right. texting people. All right, fine. Then I'm going to. Um, we're going to put this meeting uh, on, on hold until such time as we get quorum again. Okay. Now yeah. the meeting is. That's at 7.25. Okay, so the meeting is on... The meeting it's is in recess. recess. It is okay, in recess. So can we do a, uh, uh, a uh, roll call to see nothing. what we think? No, we can do nothing now until we get the quorum back. That's it. No discussion, no talking. We're dead until the, the, we get it back. Spend your time trying to find the people who got kicked off and get them back on. Uh, John Michael says that he's in, but I don't see him. Okay, let me look for him on the other side. Aha, there he is.
Oops. Okay. Oh, they, okay. I did find him. Never mind. Madam President, what is the number of board members we need to have quorum? 13. 13, 13 for quorum, and we are at 12. I'm looking to see if there's anyone else who's should be here who's over there, and I don't think so. Robert. Robert is essential personnel. He could have gotten called away. Let's find out where he is. I did text him. Mm. We need one more. Did anyone talk to Audrey? Uh, I did. She won't be able to attend. Texted Ed. Looking for ma'am. Madam Vice President, Madam President, we have quorum. You're muted, Patty. Patty, you're muted. Yeah, I know. I did that so you wouldn't hear me typing. Uh, would you please show the in the minutes that we came out of recess at 7.32? Ryan, thank you so much for being here. You just gave us back quorum. You're welcome. You're welcome, but uh, how, how long do you anticipate us to need quorum for? Uh, uh, I don't know, but you, there's been a lot that happened here, and uh, we, we do not need to leave it at this. So um, if, um, if you could just hang in for a little while, it would be much appreciated. We're looking at other people, too, but uh, there were some people who were here and kind of got lost. We'll see what happens. Okay. Regardless, thank you for being here. All right, so I'm going to go right back to where I was. Tony, you can continue now. Unmute. One second, Rian. What time do we go into recess? I didn't have that time recorded. I apologize. Patty. 
27 after. Mm. 27. 27. 27. Thank you. Okay. Tony, I'm sorry we had to interrupt you, but please. No, I, was just, I was just, I was just saying that um, I was just echoing what Joan had said earlier in her, um, in her comment that um, she was, she offered up an idea of restricting access. And I had actually had been discussing something similar to that with a friend earlier um, and um, as a possible solution to an alternative to actually um, to doing what we're proposing. So, um, I mean, I, that was one solution, I think. Okay, I, I just made a note of that. I'm sure that Claudia has too, and she's about to speak, but she has muted. So um, I also had a friend ask if we could have done the same thing. He said that particularly Broadway, there's a, there's a bar on Broadway that's been having like a lot of games and a lot of like brawls uh, just starting. Beer Garden. Um, beer Garden, that's right. Um, every, he says a lot of things started from there and went into what is it that we saw. So um, his suggestion, not mine, was that we did uh, Broadway on that stretch. I think it's from seven to eight. And that's a, that's a suggestion. I, I am going to suggest that we don't get into the weeds on this, like Broadway from seventh to third, or, but yeah. that we look at broad ideas that we can put into this and um, say that you know, here are some here are some possible ideas. One of them might be closure of streets to make it so that fewer fewer cars can get into the center, whatever. However, that would be worded. But I, I think if we get too specific, that we're we're going to end up in the weeds again with with problems. So I, I like the way Tony was going. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can I share a few uh, points? So. Yeah. Um, so we have, um, there's actually someone created a, a poll on Town Square and um, it was, uh, the topic was, uh, it was looking at solutions. Uh, it was, it's basically looking at the 2020 election and um, what kind of things could be done uh, to minimize uh, uh, damage and um, and so one of the things uh, that there is a uh, 83 votes the top one is closed freeway entrances the next one down was 70 votes with station police officers the one down after that was temporary shutdown of scooters uh, used as bludgeoning devices and getaway transportation Next one with 47 votes was actually charged vandals and looters with crimes. Uh, 33 votes closed, closed major street access to DTLA. 23 votes station security guards. Uh, 12 more police as a short term implement, impl, implementation, but long term more honest and empathetic. Uh, shut down, so it's 12, 12 also for shut down city bikes. 10 was closed gates to parking lots, open for residents only. Yeah, so I'm just kind of reading through the poll. Um, it seems that people do see that closing freeway entrances could be a solution. Um, and um, station police officers, um, I think that's, you know, we're asking for more coverage. Um, the one thing that I definitely see um, the scooters are a uh, public safety issue. Um, they're being used to beat people. Um, they're also able to, uh, they've been used to break windows. Um, when windows are broken to a street level, um, it basically opens up the building to fire. And that's a big scary thing. Like we don't want to burn to death in our buildings. And so I think that um, the scooters being used to break glass um, it should be looked at. 
um, and um, maybe removing scooters, um, deactivating scooters after a certain time. Um, you know, it seems to, it also, I think that's something to look at. Um, a few notes is um, Scooters Metro, um, the Metro, I believe during uh, the, you know, during uh, June, May, June's unrest uh, writing, uh, metros were closed uh, going to downtown. I'm, I'm not sure if someone wants to chime in uh, for clarification. Um, and, you know, we do need essentials. Um, so food delivery, drug stores, uh, you know, how much, what restriction are we talking about? Um, and um, I think that essential businesses, you know, we need to look at that. And um, so those are a few notes. Okay. Some good ones too. Um, uh, I think the essential business are always open, right? Regardless of anything. Yeah, I don't think so, that we're looking like that no, anyway. Yeah. Right? We don't have to what ask. What we're looking for are some, a list of things that we can suggest, but not request. So that, mm -hmm. but. We can emphasize, you know, make sure that essential, you know. Yeah, that we can do. But we really uh, need. To, but we're really working on, it seems like from what Sean said and what Tony said is, is uh, the limiting the, the access by closing the freeway entry seems to be the most uh, uh, agreed upon on that poll. I mean, if it's a, to be realistic, if we were really doing a uh, sample size study, we would need to have 382 people to, uh, to be able to have like a, a 95% accuracy at 3% change. So, um, but in a short amount of time, I think how many people are there, 80, 82? Was not bad for like a one poll that was done on Facebook. So one could say that that's possibly pretty accurate to whether if we're doing a simple size study. All right, then let me just see kind of a, do we want to include restriction of entry to the area through free through freeways and possible street closures? Is that something that we want to say? If it is, yeah. uh, we'll let we'll let uh, Claudia make a note of that one. Uh, is there anyone who feels that that particular topic should be left off? I would I would recommend that with amendments. Um, no, we're not we're not doing wording yet. Well, no, I understand. I understand, Patty. But to that point, I would like that. I would like to add an addition. Should we add that in the record to reflect that that should exclude the civic center in particular? Okay. Yes, I agree because it's a civic center and financial district. You have to have that uh, provision over uh, on that letter. Okay. Um, uh, road closures are especially the one hundred and one. Um, it's very sensitive in our in our area, guys. Not to cut you guys off, but we're a few days before the election. Transportation and police and whatever have to give notice to all these people. Hundreds of thousands of people living downtown and working downtown. You're not going to get freeway closures for all of downtown from now for Tuesday. All right, then I'll go back to the idea of number three and see if that is, seems to be more reasonable to people. We put together a paragraph that just says, this is, you've seen what's going on here. We need help. We want to make sure it doesn't happen again. We're asking you to take special care of downtown that this, that this looting and rioting does not continue. Something along those lines. If someone, it, it, is that more what we feel that we should be doing than trying to come up with answers for them? I, I just, I, I just want to be able to, to come up with whatever it is you feel is the right way to handle it. Can I make a motion that, or uh, make a suggestion? Yeah. A suggestion, sorry. My suggestion is every single thing that Sean said seemed like beautiful and very realistic ideas. Even the freeway closure, 
I think they'll get the idea of where we're going. At the end of the day, as you always say, we're an advisory committee. Let's give all those as options. The scooter thing makes sense. The extra police makes sense. The potential freeway closures where needed makes sense. I just think it'll send a message to everyone at City Hall and, and the police that we as a neighborhood want to be protected. And I think they're all very actionable items. Maybe the timing doesn't work. So maybe I'm backtracking on what I just said earlier, but I think we should just put a letter together that says we support all those things. All right, what if, what, well, this, we're, what we're doing is replacing the last paragraph right now. So what if we say in that paragraph, we're asking that you take measures to make sure, that, and right, Rin, you understand you're gonna end up having to help me wordsmith this because I can't do it. But um, we're, we're, we're asking you to help us with, the, with this issue. And here is a list of issues that came up in a, a what was it, a, a survey that was, was taken. Online survey an online survey that was taken and here were the suggestions that they made hopefully some of these would would go because i don't think we can put those as our own patty i would caution any any using that online survey in any way because that was not administered through the neighborhood council there's that's beyond our control this was a facebook right. poll i think that i think that's very problematic quite frankly and that's, it's that's also not representative it's not, it's not a representative sample exactly I think, I, Patty, to the comment about wordsmithing, I would keep this very simple. And that is the downtown Los Angeles neighbor county recommends the city investigate the following solutions. In that case, you're basically providing a menu option to the electeds and to the department heads that we were sending right. this letter to. Now, Just keep it simple, keep it as a resolution. Now, those solutions are the ones we've talked about, finding ways to restrict automobile access to downtown, excluding the civic center, uh, finding a way to eliminate the scooters, which are being used as weapons, and uh, asking for more coverage from the city in the area. Are those the three that we have? Those are the only ones I've got now. So if I'm missing something, please let me know. I think it's great. Wait, so, so closed freeway entrance. So I think a few that... Uh, a few that I wrote down, do you want to turn yours? Uh, yeah, okay. A few that I wrote down was uh, closed freeway entrance, station police officers, scooters, uh, major, closed major street access to DTLA. That was, that was, that was, um, that seems like a great, that seems like noteworthy. And, um, You know, these really are all suggestions at the end of the day. We can't we make have, any, we, have to, we have to so, say it that way. We have to say, yeah. this is what we're asking so, you to do for us. Here are some suggestions yeah. that have come from stakeholders in the area, which is true. Mm. So I think one important thing to add to is to make sure that this does not hinder people's ability to exercise their right to vote. So I think that would be an important measure to at least emphasize in this as well. Okay. I, I, I think that's so, great. And maybe some of these restrictions can go into place after maybe the last poll station in downtown is closed. Um, you know, there's actually a really good website uh, that shows you like the waiting time at the polls. So, I mean, I think that is a way to quickly you know, see that, you know, it tells you today I went into the Staples Center. I, I looked at different polling stations in downtown Staples Center said less than 15 minutes, I was in and out. So I think we are able to know what's going on. We have a, uh, a good overview of what's going on. And so I think that is, uh, should be included. You know, we don't wanna restrict anyone's right to vote. You know, that's our voice. And so, uh, but you know, that's, uh, but that should be considered, you know, and, and you know, there's, there's a lot of different information that, you know, there can be, things can go really, uh, go crazy, like, you know, the day before, you know, there's like talk of like Proud Boys, you know, coming to downtown to, dis to disrupt. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, that's all stuff to consider. It's, uh, this isn't normal. We're not nor in normal times right now. And uh, we have to just kind of figure things out. 
So that's it. I will add to something so, that Charles so yeah, I, I would like us to go one step further, and I, I would like us to um, recommend that city council uh, uh, reach out um, and invite organizations to to protest and invite and have protest zones um, and encourage people to come out and speak their word, uh, speak their mind, uh, and, and clearly denote uh, where appropriate places to protest around city hall around civic center around and make safe places for people to come and 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 use their voices uh, make uh places uh, i i think this is what people want people want I mean, to go someplace not, and, and, and and what has happened so oh, far God. is there so has I, I think the problem is is been lack of organization is people just do things willy-nilly because there hasn't been an organized movement there uh, often the, the people are so frustrated and aren't focused and wherever they are they just cause chaos and and ruckus i, I think if if we're willing to meet them and say come and, and protest come and and these are the protest areas these are the areas and and reach out to the community and say come and, and do it I, Matt, I really think that should be in there i think you just defined a whole new letter something that we should absolutely look at also, Patty, sure. I don't know it's if you remember this. Paragraph. Can you hear me, Patty? I can. Okay. So I don't know if you remember this, but when, when the George Floyd uh, murder happened, uh, I touched base with you and asked if we could have asked as Link for a space where people could come and gather so that and we, we could offer them a place where they could protest. And we can. Safely, right? right? Claudia, we can. What I'm challenging is whether or not we're overstepping this letter and heading into another one that I'd like to see Mac start writing. Uh, Patty, I actually would argue that what Mac suggested is in line with this letter because basically this is an alternative to a curfew order that I think is way too extreme and I think everybody might agree with me on this. And so what Mac is suggesting is a possibly an alternative that basically can provide safe avenues for people to exercise their First Amendment rights while also you know, ex, you know, speaking out and uh, can, we, can we do that briefly though without the, without it becoming all right. Um, yeah. And Rian, are you able to start typing? Yeah, I'm doing um, my best right now to catch uh, everything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I don't really think we should take the curfew off the table. I think that um, I think that there's probably quite a few people that are supporting something along the lines or you know, of that. So I don't think we should take that off the table. That can be another recommendation, but, um, you know, and also I would consider, I wouldn't like kind of gerrymander what downtown is. I would just like say um, everything between the 10, the 101, the five, you know, downtown's kind of an island in that way. And so I would just kind of make those uh, boundaries as like, the, the touch, the, the, I would define that. But I think that we should put everything out there as an option, you know, curfew, restrictions to Metro, all of it, put it all can, out there. Can I add and something to that are, point, Sean? Yeah. Can I add something to your point? I think another thing that relates to what you're saying is nobody is talking about COVID. It seems like whenever it's convenient, when so anyone wants to protest, all of a sudden, the whole idea of COVID completely goes out the window. We have in downtown a huge homeless population. We have hundreds of people, thousands of people living in close quarters. I mean, Patty hasn't even left her apartment in however many months. Uh, we're dealing with COVID more than anybody else in the city. And part of these protests, it brings, it brings illness in the time of a pandemic. I, I experienced it firsthand. People in my family experienced it firsthand. And... I, I think that's that's not right as well. That should definitely be part of our message. I know people have First Amendment rights. We have Pershing Square that's designated as a place for protest. We have City Hall with parks around it designated for protest. But you know, there's a, there's an extent to which it's acceptable. There's a time and place for it. But COVID is definitely part of the equation here. I think. That's a Ryan, thank you for sharing that. And um, it's, it's so wild that we have so much going on right now that we kind of overlook COVID. I mean, that's how, 
that's the level that we're dealing with. And, and thank you for bringing that up, Ryan. And, you know, I mean, look at kind of like that biker event in like, you know, Nebraska, Wisconsin or something. I mean, it was like a super spreader event, you know? And so we're, we have to consider gonna that. We're going to get out of here tonight. We're going to have to start putting together what we want, condensing it and, and, and setting up some language so that we can approve it and continue. Uh, so Rian is really good at, 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 at typing fast and, uh, do you I, mind if I read what I have so far as no, far as the moving clause? I was going to ask if you could please do that. So, and please, you know, the language is, can be amended. So please take that in consideration, but please give me a suggested language as well. So we're all in consensus here. And we're After you finish, things. please. So this would be the moving clause, the last paragraph in our letter. Therefore, the Downtown Los Angeles Council recommends the following actions be taken by the city of Los Angeles. One, restrict access to downtown Los Angeles through major street and freeway closures. Uh, increase law enforcement presence for crime prevention. Allow for designated zones for protests. Consult with dockless mobility providers to remove e-scooters temporarily from the public right away. Is there anything that needs to be added, changed from what we discussed? First of all, I think that the scooter thing needs to be explained. So a, a comma as they are being used as weapons would be very helpful. Okay. I'll agree with that. And maybe just one thing, one thing referencing COVID. What specifically? Can we, can we craft something here? Um, mandate, mandate, you know, protest zones that are consistent with CDC guidelines given the current pandemic. Okay. So, Juan, I Thank you, Rian. Rian, did we put in um, something about um, just increasing um, the number of police or something like that as well, just to cover the, such a broad area? The way I wrote that is increased law enforcement presence for crime prevention. Is there something, do we want to reward? reward That's okay. good. Okay. Maybe say, especially in residential areas of downtown. Okay, let's start at the beginning, Rian. Uh, okay. Give me one second here. Yeah. Who's writing this down, me or Rian? And then I Rian. send it to me. Rian, don't worry about it, Claudia. It's okay. Okay, and then send it to Patty or me. I've got it already. We're good. Um, so I can, once we finished it, I can get it into the letter. Um, So this is how it reads as of now. Restrict access to downtown Los Angeles. Let me start from the top. Therefore, the downtown Los Angeles Council recommends the following actions be taken by the city of Los Angeles. Restrict access to downtown Los Angeles for major street and freeway closures. Increase law enforcement presence for crime prevention, especially residential areas. Allow for designated protest, allow for designated zones for protests. Consult with dockless mobility providers to remove e-scooters temporarily from the public right away to prevent them from being used as weapons. Mandate protest zones be consistent with public health guidelines for COVID-19. Okay. Um, I, would, I, I, I would include something about respecting the election. Uh, so I would definitely yeah, absolutely. include that. That would probably be, you know, all, you know, as the last one, all guidelines, um, all recommendations be consistent to, uh, Give me a second here, actually, to write it down. Um, what about something um, regarding trash cans? That's where a lot of the fires were started. Um, I don't know if we can remove trash cans. Uh, could trash cans be emptied, you know, at the end of the day so that we have empty trash cans? At least there's not a lot of fuel. Or And then also um, um, enforcement of fireworks. I, I don't feel like, uh, I mean, they were setting fireworks off in the middle of the street, on the sidewalk, you know, big fireworks. Uh, I'm also- I don't want to get into the weeds with this, guys. I don't want to get into too many details. Or we're right. going to up, we're going to end up with something that they won't read if we, if we tell them also, too much. Also, I promise you the police are professionals. They know what's going to happen more than we, we can guess. And, and also, should we- Include some PSA information about safeguarding what residents and business owners and stakeholders can do to protect themselves. Uh, um, that's the next item on the agenda. You read the next okay. item on the agenda. Got it. Right. All right. Okay. All right. 
Uh, the only thing that I would say here is you don't have any timing on this, Rian. Therefore, the Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood mm -hmm. Council recommends the following actions be taken by the city of Los Angeles during the time, you know, we have to, we have to set a time on it. We, otherwise you're asking them to do it for the rest of their lives. That's not what we mean. During a time when there is an expectation of issues because of the election, something, I don't know, but, but definitely not something that lasts forever. And uh, doc lists could be spelled better. I'm not mute. So maybe something definitely, um, I don't think we're going to know who the president is for a while. For a while. We're not gonna go, know on election evening. Uh, no, no. Things are gonna be contentious. Uh, you know, the current president could make some, uh, push a lot of people's buttons and incite a lot of violence. And so I don't, I mean, that's really what we're all here about. Um, that's what I'm here about. Um, that's what I see. I see someone who's an, our president pushing people's buttons like he's been doing this past year. Guys, I, mean, I, 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 I appreciate the conversation. Sorry. Let's stay on topic. We have a lot to do tonight. Please, please. stay on topic and move toward a vote. Oh, okay. I want to very Listen to me, guys. If one person leaves, we no longer have a meeting. We need to finish this and and get. Uh, okay, thank you, Rian. Uh, that's that's a colon, not a semicolon, at the end of Los Angeles. And again, something about uh, during a period of time when issues are, I don't know, something just when when respecting issues from the. Uh, So let's take a look. Should we say during the 2020 election period? I don't know if that's too broad. I think that's a, that might be concerning. No, I think during yeah. during a time when violence is anticipated because of the election, I don't know. During the 2020 election, just put it that way. Okay, yeah. sure. Okay. Just capital. I mean, right we'll, now, we'll, 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 we'll correct all right. areas Ian, later Ian, let, me, let me take over for a minute here. Okay. We have something here. It has everybody's suggestions in it. If we don't want to get in, you know, like I said, we don't want to get into the weeds and start telling them which streets or anything like this. Uh, is there anything about this? And I'm not, nobody talking out, please let me see some, uh, some hands go up. If you, if you feel that you, you want to change something in it. Otherwise, um, yes, Joan. Joan? Oh, you didn't mean to have your hand up. Okay. Um, Mac, did you want to change something? Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think we just glossed over the, the uh, protest part. Um, I think encouraging uh, civil disobedience um, in a nonviolent fashion is 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 um, and it, it is is probably where I was going um, on All that. Right. I don't know. So, do you want to add to that sentence because we want to keep it short? Allow for designated zones of protest. Continue. Um, right um, to promote a, a civil di disobedience in a nonviolent fashion. Okay. So while he's typing and correcting. Or it could be civil uh, protest in a nonviolent fashion. I, I actually would prefer that language. All right. So now let me make clear where we are, guys, so there's no confusion. We've had a lot of discussion, a lot of going back and forth. When he finishes this paragraph, when we get Docless finally spelled right, how the hell do you spell Docless? Anyway, um, what will happen? is the paragraph that starts with please give the neighborhood the protection of night will completely be eliminated and replaced by this otherwise the letter will stay as it is and what we will be voting on very soon I hope is the new letter so take a good look at this and um, 
I do want to preface if there's any grammatical errors, we can amend that as long I, as the as long as the status like, of the changes that we have or the body of the language is remains unchanged. So make sure we have that down as well. If there's anything we need to add, we need to do it now and vote on that. So I'd like to see hands from now on, please. And Joan, yours is up, but you're saying it's not, you don't want it up? Okay. Um, I'm not seeing anyone asking. Oh, okay. for it's it's docket less, D-O-C-K-E-T-L-E-S-S. -S. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Something yeah. has to be. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, that's what she said. That's it. I just checked. All right. Docket list is a word, but that's not the word that we word. want. Yeah, I don't. I, it's it's supposed to be spelled doc like list. This. It's doc list. There's no doc. You guys, okay. I'm so sorry. I hate to be annoying. I actually do have to leave in about 90 seconds. Is there a way that right. we can vote on this? No, we have to. All right, we would have to finish this then. Okay. Really finish it now, and we probably won't get to the second item. But um, I'm going to ask this again. Raise your hand. Joan, I'm not looking at your hand anymore because I know it's up and you don't mean it. I don't, so, okay, so hold on. Let me go and change it. Uh, raise your hand if you have any more changes. Otherwise, I'm going to ask for a motion to accept the letter as amended. I'm going to make the motion or I'll second that. You I'll can only do one. Ryan, you made the motion. Sure, second. I'll make it. Pat Barrett, okay. Second it. Uh, since we've had a large discussion period, I am going to ask us to take a vote. And the way I'm going to do this, because we've had so much going on, uh, is to uh, wait a minute. Did, did ask, have are are we going to entertain um, asking for more um, discussion from from the public? We're not. We're Do not. Do you know we have to have general public comment at the end of this meeting? Per, we have general per the public comment, yes, but we've already had public comment on this item. So, a general I, public I, comment can be held after we lose quorum. So let's um, let's take a vote let's, and. Yeah, we have a motion. Let's vote. All right, Claudia, I'm going to ask you. All to right, do I a roll. caution. I caution us not to do this. I caution us to actually um, allow five people. You can't do that. Well, we can't. You have okay. to let everybody. Yeah. Look, Mac. Okay. If we don't take the vote now, we won't take it tonight. Oh, we won't have a letter. Mac, we need to do we it. Take the vote. We won't have a letter. We gotta get okay. That. All right. It means we're going to lose quorum. That's yeah. Okay, all right, so fine, we fine. Do whatever all right, Claudia, Claudia, can you please do a roll call vote? All right. You're muted. Okay, sorry, I'm going back to my top of the agenda. Okay, uh, Patty? I don't vote. Ryan? Yes. Pat Barrett? Yes. Ian? Yes. Joan? Yes. Myra? Yes. Colin Rion? Yes. Tony Hoover? Yes. Patricia Lewis? Yes. Market, um, Mac? Yes. Okay. Claudia, yes. Robert Newman? We seem to have lost Robert. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, did you get John Michael? Um, Michael Burbank, uh, Jean Michel? Yes. And then Sean Smith. And then. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. So that is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, eleven, twelve. A pass motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you stay long enough if we, if, if we do this one really quite quickly and then we'll go back to public comment without you? The second motion is pretty simple. We just, uh, and it's what, what you had just asked for. 
we want uh, DLAC outreach to be able to conduct outreach and PSAs on an ongoing basis during this this period of time without having to come to the board every time in three, four weeks. So the motion is DLAC board shall allow DLAC outreach to conduct outreach on public safety and emergency preparedness for the November 2020 elections, content to be approved according to bylaws by the president. If we can pass that before he has to leave, if, if no one has any discussion on it. Um, I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I'll I move the motion. It. I'll second it. Who? Right. Uh, I have five. Who made the if motion? We, um, I made a motion. Ian. And I second it. Have Eric. Have Eric. All right. I see hands up. Are these hands about this motion? If they aren't, please take your hand down. It's not any of panelists, it's attendees. Yeah, I've got no, I've got I've got four attendees with their hand up. If it is for public One comment, panelist. not for the P, for the public information, for outreach to conduct public information. All right. Um, Patty, as a note for the Brown Act, members of the public need to stay on the agenda item. If they're not, you need to give them at least three warnings and then you can mute them. But they have to be on topic during the agenda item. So you might want to make that announcement. All right. So that's, that is true. The only thing that we will listen to is whether or not uh, outreach will be given uh, permission to to give, do outreach on public safety and emergency preparedness. That is all. So please, if your hand is up because you wanna say something else, don't make us hang up on you, please. Just take your hand down now. All right, uh, Nara, are you capable to go through now? Do you have all the things you need to do it? Uh, I'm not a co-host, so I can't do anything. Okay. I, and I, I need to bring Ed in. Okay, well, if that's coming in, then um, that's good. All right, I'm gonna start up at the top here and while she's doing that, so PPLS City Council. Yeah, do you all have a quorum right now? Yes, we do, thank you. Okay, cool. Um, I just, I do wanna note that the reason why ACLU beat or uh, the city dropped the curfew and the county dropped the curfew. I'm sorry, the, 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 that is not the topic that's on the table. What's the we topic? Are, all we're at, we're talking about a motion to allow you like out. Patty, I promise if you let me, if you let me finish, you'll see how it's related. All right. The reason why the ACLU succeeded in suing the city and the county about the curfew is because the city and the county explicitly passed the curfew laws in retaliation to the protests. And they used the protests as the reason for those curfews. And then the reason why the ACLU ended up winning is because it's a First Amendment violation. What does this have to do with outreach, sending out messages about public safety? That's all we're talking about. It's Please stay on topic. You can talk about that during regular public comment if you want to. Well, I just, uh, I don't know what's going on. You guys are fucking tripping me out. Like, you, I don't know. Right. You guys I'm are sorry. intellectual as shit. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll it's get back irrelevant to stuff. Stop with irrelevant stuff. Chi Young, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. You made a, a, a not. Madam I'm President, just on the point of order, yeah, make sure to give three warnings in the event that the, in the person is I did tell him yes. yes. Okay. All right, just uh, kick him out. Reaching. Point of order, you cannot kick him out from a meeting, public meeting. That's right. Well, Chi Young, uh, you all sound like Trump supporters, how you all were like saluting. Excuse me. On topic, please, or I'm going to have to let you go. On topic, which is the D-Link outreach to conduct outreach on public safety and emergency preparation during, and, and other comments on other than that, I cannot in, have at this time. Do you okay. have a comment on that? Uh, I mean, 
is this what you were you all have been talking about for the past uh, you know X amount of minutes? No, this is a different motion. And please, I have to ask you to stay with this motion. If you have a comment on the D-Link outreach, conducting outreach on public safety and emergency preparedness, we will yes. hear you now. Okay, so outreach for public safety. Um, we do not, we know that police officers do not keep us safe. It's actually a proven fact. And um, po policing in America, what, what, Patty, what? You're, you're talking about outreach topic. for public this safety. No, we're not. We are discussing whether we give our outreach committee the authority to do outreach on public safety. I'm going to interject. I'm going to say that uh, public service announcement, it's not public safety announcement, PSA, public service announcement. Right, right but that's not right, Claudia. Let's go ahead what and is finish. The what the is water. the clarification that Claudia just made? I am way too high for this. Like that is trippy as hell. I, I don't even know what that's referring to. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, to. but I was like. <laughs> Madam President, please, please pause Claudia. this time. As a point of order, as a way that this agenda item is written, technically he is on topic. You need to you need to inform the public that basically they have a certain time and basically if they are on topic, they they have they're allowed to speak. But this item, the gentleman that is speaking is on topic. Can you do the timing for us? All right. Should please are we doing 30 seconds for general public com or public comment I on this have, item? Yeah, I have seven people, so uh, it's a very tiny idea, and I think 30 seconds is quite adequate. Madam President, I would recommend that we, we restart this gentleman's time to the full, to the full 30 seconds. Absolutely. Okay, let Go me know it. when you... All time, though. Yes? We've started your time over again. I am. Hello? Peoples for City Council? No, we're look, we're talking to Ricci right now. I guess we lost him. All right, we'll come back. That's good. He lost. He's lost. All right, uh, Kelvin Martinez. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Great. Um, so uh, I'm talking about outreach. Yes. Uh, regarding PSAs uh, about public safety. So actually not PSAs, it's just outreach announcements. Just outreach announcements about public safety, yes? Yes. So this uh, is absolutely what you should have been relying on in order to have more public safety. Uh, I just wanna chime in with some experience. This isn't my opinion, this is simply observation. I've been to over a dozen protests myself the LAPD also reported that only between six and 7% of protests have been uh, violent with even regarding uh, uh, property damage. Uh, Kelsey, every, your time is up. Every, fuck you. All right, next person, Peter Kloon. Peter Kuhn. Yeah, hi. Um, so as a, as a member of this outreach committee, um, very soon to be former member mm -hmm. of this outreach mm -hmm. committee, I need to tell you guys that this entire process has been a complete failure. You have, if you wanted to engage outreach and have an actual conversation, it should have happened before. We shouldn't be having this conversation now after you've passed an mm -hmm. agenda item, after you've passed through something on 24 hours notice, after you've passed it through with the smallest possible mm -hmm. quorum of people, after you've limited public comment to 30 seconds. Like the, the entire process that you have put forward has shown a complete disdain for any Peter, real the time is up. input for people from the community. And it's embarrassing. You all ought to be remarkably embarrassed at what's happened to Peter, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to cut you off. Your time is up. 30 minutes for a meeting to do this whole thing. You thought you would be done in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You didn't plan to have anybody come and actually give Thank you any- you, Peter. Input. Your you time is up. Sorry, you didn't take it. There are other people that they need to speak to. Thank you. Was, um, 
what are we talking about? I very much apologize. <laughs> Madam Vice President, you need to meet the other meeting attendant, please. The incompetence of this board over and over again is astounding. It's absolutely astounding. And so Peter, I, I resign. I'm, I'm I going to mute yourself. People. You keep on muting it's yourself. Like, it's just astounding. Like, you want to have a conversation about. Rian, am I allowed to remove? What's that? Am I allowed to remove somebody that keeps talking in? You, you can, it, it's a problematic item. We technically do not have instructions on how to virtually remove someone from a public meeting. But so he doesn't respect caution. the timing. Res I, I would caution the timing. You should not remove somebody from a public meeting and you should not be doing that. And people but are doing Because you, keep, you guys are talking over each other. You don't even respect the timing. And the timing is arbitrary. Words. You had 30 seconds and you're giving oh, people 30 seconds. Let's it's not, it. it's not, All that's right. not, and, and, and the public comment should have happened before you voted on a motion. That needs to happen before you go on a motion. That is not how you do things. It's literally not how you do All things. Right. We, we, you're, you're, you're going to have that voided. It's not how you do things. It's really not even legal for you to do that. So do not. Madam go, Vice do President, not, Madam President, I would recommend you an agenda all item. meeting attendants and basically reopen them one by one as they speak. Yeah, you're correct. We can only have one person speaking at a time. So um, the Vice President is going to start down the list again and you will be given a chance to speak on this particular topic. Please do not get two of you going at the same time. All right, Kendall K. This is on outreach on safety. Yes. Police do not protect people. You don't do outreach right. You can't even do public comment right. I don't know what authority you think you have to do any of this. It'll, it is literally, <laughs> um, you are literally limiting public comment. You're not doing this procedure right. You're violating the Brown Act several times. You are just, you cannot even, I cannot even process how you are trying to limit people over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and, and like trying to boot people off the meeting and you're not, you're being confusing about what even this motion is. You haven't even introduced. Thank you. Motion. Your time is up. Um, no, like you're insane. Y'all are insane. I can't even process you guys. You're just like, thank you. Ugh. The worst, the worst people. Um, and you were saying you can't swear, but like literally uh, that dude, one of these dudes swore earlier. It's just the only rules only apply to you guys. So I'm not going to respect your time. I'm so sorry. That's you. You don't respect ours. So you don't get to risk. I don't have to respect yours. Lisa. Hey, this has been a, the most entertaining evening I've had in some time. I'm glad. Look, I'm against this motion because I've got to go with my man, Peter. You just can't turn around and do that to your uh, outreach committee and expect them to jump hoops because you're saying jump through a hoop. What I am in favor, though, is that you're actually doing this motion right. You put a motion on the table and then you opened it up to public comment, unlike your last motion, which you opened up and just quickly voted on and did not take any public comment on and it's going to be voted voided because it was done outside of your own bylaws to not open up a motion to public comment trust me many people have already written letters and emails to done about that so Thank don't you, vote for this motion peter doesn't want it gary Gary Christian. Hi, I just wanted to um, to add. I, I, are we still making suggestions for the? Uh, no, this is just for the. No, no, this is related to the outreach motion. Okay, um, I I thought this was about something else. I'll waive my time. Thank you. I have Kendall again. I'm gonna come back to you. Let me. Okay. Can 
I make a suggestion? Before we let somebody speak, ask them how much time do they want, do they? No. Do they? No. Wait, no. Order, everybody has to have equal time. Yeah. Like I, I've time been unmuted, so now this is my time. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Claudia, I've, I've been unmuted, so this is my time now. Um, I'd like to speak to the motion that uh, apparently is the only one we're allowed to speak on, which is about the PSA of public safety. Uh, I want to echo what the previous callers have said, including uh, Ricci, uh, including Peter. Uh, police don't keep us safe. Every time there's a protest in downtown, the only people who are bringing the violence is the police. What you're referring to as uh, riots, that that's not the same as the, pol the, the protests against police brutality. You're looking at the whatever the Lakers and Dodgers celebrations were, which, by the way, the police did bring a ton Thank of you, violence Kay, to your that. Thank you, Kay. Your time is up. Look at, okay, well, you'll have to figure out how to mute me, so I'll just keep talking because <laughs> I don't know. You guys seems like it doesn't know how to do that. Um, but do you know, like, why are the this is your second warning. Point of order. Do we have a quorum? Yes, we do. Okay. Lane. Lane McFadden, you're next. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, all right. So outreach. Uh, I think it's kind of ironic that you guys are talking about outreach um, when you can't seem to get people to talk in a public forum without continually breaking the Brown Act, just saying call, calling public comment that bullshit as one of your neighborhood council members did I, I mean it's ridiculous that you want to pretend like you care about what your community thinks about and then you vote on a motion you rush to vote on a motion because you don't have quorum earlier today someone said we do this because we we like it really why was one of your her, why was one of your members driving to a restaurant while he was supposed to be in this meeting if you guys care so much about your neighborhood you don't. You don't. And that was made explicitly clear tonight. And it's ridiculous. It, this Thank you, Elaine. Sham. Olga? Could, could we emphasize before we, we get another uh, public comment that, that we are looking for? Um, Point of order, this isn't that we can't have this conversation during public comment. Yeah, oh, okay. after, afterwards. Okay. I, I just would like to see some people add some, some, some. Um, I mean, uh, people, sorry, people, it's actually my time to talk right now. All right, is, you guys uh, can complain all you want. But if, point if, of order. If, somebody, sorry, somebody sorry, could add some. Can we all stop? It's Olga's time. Olga. Please leave Olga alone. It's Olga's time to speak. Olga, you're muted. Olga, go ahead. You're self-muted. Trying to unmute her, but... No, you can't. She did it to herself. It would... Um... Hi, can you hear okay. me? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes, go ahead. Uh, hi there, my name is Olga. I'm, I've been listening to this and um, I'm a member of a nearby neighborhood council and I'm speaking as an individual, but I just wanted to say the way this meeting has been run is scary, but pursuant to the new business motion uh, under 3B, I really am hesitant to, I'm scared of what this neighborhood council means when it talks about out outreach on public safety, because right now all I've seen is that you guys just want the police to do everything. And the fact that the fact that you're talking about the elections and how there might oh, be- Olga, your time is up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Megan? Megan? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so first of all, like other people have said, the way that this meeting has been run is absolutely uh, shockingly atrocious. Um, pushing through a motion without public comment first is unacceptable. Secondly, in terms of outreach, um, I'm really curious as to why your area-wide homeless residential director seat is vacant along with both of your social service provider seats. Um, basically all of your business related seats are filled. So I think that makes it pretty clear where your priorities lie when it comes to outreach and your apparent concern about DTLA residents and stakeholders. And I also just wanna say fuck you to Mac for interrupting Olga. That was really unacceptable. Anyways, I yield my time. 
Thank you, Megan. Jasmine. Jasmine, you're up next. Jasmine, you need to unmute yourself. I did. There you go. Okay. Um, I just want to say that I think I have no idea what this motion is <laughs> um, because you guys just don't do a great job of outreach. Um, the whole thing is a sham and I hope every one of you is uh, voted out next time. That's it. Thank you. Emily. Emily, Emily Jensen. All right, next is Richie. Richie S. Okay. Richie S going three times. Jack Pedersen. Jack Pedersen. Jack Pedersen, we can hear you. Yeah, but can they hear me? Yes. Go ahead. There are a lot of background noise. Oh, let's try this later. John. Um, Kalidia, can I have your Snapchat, please? You sexy as hell. Oh, God. Get your Nicola. Boy, Tony Hover, but look at your pushback hairline. Your hair like cricket as hell. Boy, look at your chin. Boy, your chin go up and down. Boy, you can't. Boy, look at your head, boy. Boy, <laughs> boy, boy you like the siren head, ugly eye, nigga. Boy, you ugly. Boy, Thank hey, hey, I'm about, I'm about to go on Patricia. Patricia's like in the crackhead. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hey, stop. You can't mute me, Patricia. Look at your crack. You like a crackhead. Hey, Joan Matt and hey, Joan McCraw. Look at your, oh my gosh. Calvin. Wait, do me. Kelvin. Kelvin going three times. Yo, the tech isn't working right. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I mean, actually, like Mac is saying, I have some things that I'd like to add in a very friendly manner. 30 seconds isn't enough to do it, so I'm not going to bother. This is complete bullshit the way this... I actually have things that I would love to offer in a friendly manner towards your meeting. This is regarding the agenda item outreach. Yes, I understand. This is regarding uh, outreach. What I'm saying is I would love to provide some helpful solutions as somebody who's also provided outreach, but I cannot because 30 seconds isn't enough. That's not real public participation in democracy. All of the motions that you've passed already, even though they'll be voided, will make things worse. Your concerns are going to be worse because of what you've passed. Thank things you, are going Calvin. to escalate downtown because of what you've already done. Even though you have good reasons that you don't want uh, destruction downtown, everything you've passed so far is going to make that much, much worse, much worse. Thank you, Kelvin, your time is up. Logan. Logan. Sophie. Sophie Bridget. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I just wanted to say um, I'm a member, I'm a resident of Los Angeles. I've lived here all my life. Um, I'm very concerned that the person on your 
um, counsel who spoke to the importance of COVID safety at protests then showed himself walking down the street with his face mask around his neck. That's obviously like blatantly in violation of COVID safety. So when we're talking about public safety announcements coming from this neighborhood council, I just severely doubt uh, the ability of this particular council to put out any meaningful this public- This is not regarding agenda item outreach. No, it's about public safety outreach. Something well, that you could go on to public comment when it comes to public comment. Well, I'm just very concerned that you're talking about putting out public safety announcements from this particular board. I understand board. that, but this is not the time to talk about that. Thank you. John? <laughs> John Kin. John Kins. Can you hear us? You are on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Yo, it's me. Yo, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Yo, Claudia. Claudia, can I get your number? Yo, you was bad as fuck. You was not gonna regarding the Yo, agenda Claudia, you item. Like a porn star. You look like <laughs> Zoom user. I love roasting. Come on, guys. Lighten up. Uh, uh hello? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right, great. Can I just like, hit you in the fucking bed like you sexy as fuck, girl? I would fuck you in the fuck the asshole. I would fuck the asshole. Thank All you. right, we're not going to have any more public comment yeah, like yo, that. I would fuck that pussy. If anybody so really bad. wants to make a public comment, we want to hear it. Just like we heard 25 minutes to 30 minutes of public comment on the first item that we voted on. We want to hear it. Damn. Yeah, damn, Claudia. Yeah, Claudia. I cannot permit this to go on. And instead of of having this motion go one way or the other, I am more I'm more inclined to stop this meeting right now because of what's going on. Right. It is completely beyond any kind of a code of conduct that is appropriate for this meeting, and it has been happening if it was one or two people, but it's happened a bunch of times. So at this moment, it's it's completely up to the public. We will either stop this meeting right now, or you can be heard. But if you're going to be heard, then don't ruin it for the others who want to be heard by doing this kind of thing. I hope I'm making myself clear. We're Madam not President, gonna have that kind of talk. Madam President, I would make a note that Members of the public that wish to speak on the non-agendized mat um, item may speak during general public comment as well. I believe that was brought up several times, but yes, we will have a, a another public comment. This is only, and I, I just feel like it's time to tell the people again what their what this motion is. All we're doing is asking for permission for outreach to do outreach during that period of time, so that we don't have to have another special meeting. That's all that this is about. So I'm going, to I'm going to have her start up the public comment again. But if it becomes abusive, as it has been, then I am going to stop this meeting and we will be adjourned. Nara, continue. Jag. Who are we looking for? Jag. Mm -hmm. um, OK. John? John? All right, I got something to say. Patsy, if you don't get your cursed ass out of the Zoom with your fake ass, you like plastic surgery, bitch, elf looking ass, hey, look at your edge. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is adjourned. Wait, I wait. Thank you for your time and your patience, but we are not going to listen to that okay. Point of order, Madam President. We have point to have a order. motion to join. Point or join wait, 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 point of order. So, so this is, it sounds like we're being Zoom bombed. And yes. I think there's a procedure for that. Isn't there a waiting room you can put these people in? No, there isn't because we're doing webinars, not, not uh, meetings. Okay. No, there's a way on Zoom, Mac is talking, but there's a way to put people in the waiting room so yes. that we're, there should be a feature on Zoom. As soon as you hear someone make a comment like that, they're not part of the public, this is a Zoom bomb situation, you put them in the waiting room and you get rid of them. I do not have that, no. Okay. 
only it's I've been told that they don't do it on, on webinars. Uh, look, whatever we have to do to um, we'll take the motion that's that has been proposed is going to be uh, tabled until another meeting. Probably to the to the I would say to the next board meeting, uh, which will be too late for it anyway, so we probably won't even do it. I'm not going to allow this board to have this kind of conduct anymore, to have to listen to this sort of thing. It is in a, just inexcusable. If it is people bombing us, I'm sorry, but we still, we cannot, we can't be sure that it isn't just people who are doing this because they don't like what we're doing. And I'm sorry they don't. I will go on to record before we, we close this off that we had 25 to 30 minutes of public comment on the last item. And I don't know where you got the idea. There'd been no public comment on it, but there was. Um, this item, we are not going to be able to finish public comment because of the Zooming. Rian, I want to know, I don't want to know anything except how to make this meeting end right now. Basically, this is a little problematic because it is during public comment. Um, I mean, we can put the meeting on recess. Um, I don't, there hasn't been advice from the department as far as how to approach uh, this incident during a Zoom bomb. My best recommendation would be that we put the meeting in recess temporarily to see how to address this item. And then um, if there's if there's a further advice regarding adjournment or whether or not to conclude public comment, I think that would be the most appropriate way. Madam, I can make it in by leaving and uh, lowering the low quorum. That uh, is a possibility as well. No, goodbye, yeah, I, I believe that if we go into recess, we will end up below quorum. Goodbye, uh, y'all. Madam President, we do not have quorum. Thank you. Um, Great. In that case, I would like to thank those who are attending who are not, who actually came to attend. I really appreciate your comments regardless of whether you agree with us or not. And we are going to um, adjourn at 840 due to lack of quorum. Thank you. Thank you, board members. For being with us. Good night, everyone. Good night.